from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. So, good afternoon. We're going to do this very informally. Thank you very much for coming. Um, we are very, very pleased to have Daniel Mueller shot, who performed a concert last night under the auspices of the Kendler Cello Society. And we are very grateful to the Society for making possible this class and a whole history of many significant cello concerts over the years. So thank you for being with us. Um, this will be a performance by Maggie Hummel-Strong. She'll be playing the first movement of the Dvorak Cello Concerto. Very good. Wonderful. So I just grab a chair and then I will Oops. set on this side. So actually just the exposition. Dvorak Cello Concerto. Yes, yes. great.
very good. So until here, bravo. <laughs> so. Yeah, so it's, um, I mean, the Dvorak concerto is always, of course, a special piece and uh, a special piece of music. And I think um, you do many very good things. You play, you know, the opening after that long tutti of the orchestra, you, you somehow have to um, increase the energy of that cello entrance. And I, I think that's what you, what you do, that's, that when you put the bow on the string, that you really have an immediacy of, um, you know, energy and emotion. And uh, Dvorak writes, um, yeah, quasi improvisando, but at the same time, it should be uh, risoluto, what he also wants and uh, quotes in the, uh, in the score. And I think the energy comes actually from that beginning, from the smaller notes, from the 16th, the two. And um, so maybe can you just start there and try to really hold the energy from the from the up bow when you start um, so to the uh, two sixteen notes. Let's try that again. Yes. And also, I mean, the gesture, you know, should be just grandioso. I think that's very important in this piece because it's, you can imagine, I mean, it was such an innovation at the time when Roja created this piece for, you know, symphonic writing for the cello. So you have to somehow, um, uh, yeah, represent uh, the cello as an orchestra in itself. Uh, that's my imagination, what I have. So also the gesture is really, like this, you, you present the concerto to whoever sits there, <laughs> and um, and that's the you know the gesture that you should have, very extroverted and proud. <laughs> Try to, it's already better, but you're losing energy already when you play the long note. So if you, I mean, it's just uh, my idea, if you breathe in, bam, so that kind of, that kind of energy. So don't um, stop your bow, you know, when you, when you put this, can you just make that movement? Just, just like this? Yes, exactly, and that's, that's how you should start. Yes, it's already much better. It's actually sounding more open. The, the cello immediately, you know, comes out more. The, the sound goes out more. And then um, once you reach the um, double stops, there's actually, you know, not each double stop should have the same dynamical range. It should be also direction. To the last one. And uh, so maybe you can also try to, you know, every chord that you play should increase in the speed a little more. So maybe you try that. More. Yes. Yes. Can you do even more? Good. Yes, much better. Yes. And let's continue from there. Yes, and here it's the same. It's the same thing here um, that the long note is really, you know, pushing the energy to the uh, shorter notes. So um, try to really watch your bow also. That once you put it on the string, that it has a kind of crescendo feeling or yes, just um, increase of tension. Can you just play the E from there? Da. Yes, and. I mean, once you reach the tip, of course, you have to increase the arm weight a little bit. Da, 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 da. Yes, not too soon. Yes. yes, and really try and watch your bow that you don't 
you know, once you start, that it doesn't go up towards the fingerboard, that it just stays, stays there. Yes, that's better. the moment when you sort of uh, invite the orchestra to play with you. Um, I mean, talking about the atmosphere of the cello opening, what, what do you think? What is this for you? <laughs> I've struggled with that a lot because I think I've played it so many times that okay. it's hard for it to feel like an idea and not like technique. Okay. But recently I was sort of, and this is really silly, I'm, It's very good. I mean, that's a good picture. Yeah. And um, and since everything you do is actually, you know, very much controlled technically, it seems secure. So you can actually go to the next step and forget about, you know, forget about all the. Con of course, you have to have the, some control, technic technical wise, but just to have some kind of a picture in mind and flying or or you know presenting something very important um, that's I think the that really helps um, the atmosphere and to create an atmosphere there mm -hmm. and um, and I think you know there are so many contrasts I mean Dvorak he has he has been in his times when he was director in New York he has been inspired by folk music American folk music by folk tunes and everything that he, he composed somehow is very natural and very simple and and this uh, and, and they are very clear moods where in the beginning you have this very extrovert and, and passionate opening and then the second theme is very thoughtful and more inward and and these clear moods these clear contrasts I think uh, we need to bring out a lot and and work on this that you know, everyone who listens to this music and experiences it clearly understands the musical message. And, um, and it helps um, at the opening, as I said, I mean, the energy to keep that element. And also, when we come now to, to this place, so there, I think it's important to have that clear rhythmical element. And don't, sometimes you're a little lazy with your bow and then you're stressing it a little bit too much that once the orchestra is there, they can't really pick it up clearly. So, so that's something <coughs> to work on to be very clear about that rhythm, rhythmical element. So let's go from there, from, the, from that place. <laughs> Yes. So what is what is the most important note that you were striving? Me. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> Five points. Yes. Yeah. And that's uh, the thing that you have to be clear about it. And once you start with a yada pipam, if you make a diminuendo already at the start, then it's the message is already not as clear as it should be. Mm -hmm. So you have to keep the bow, you know, very close to the string and not shift again. Once you shift towards the fingerboard, it's just uh, the tension is, uh, yeah, loosened up. Right. Okay. <laughs> On the da da di da ya ba 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 ba, it's a, uh, he also writes pesante, mm -hmm. so that means to hold it back a little more, and that also could mean that more bow. Ba da di da ya ba 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 ba. Um, I think you could use a little more speed in the bow. Ba da di ba ba da ba ya ba ba, so that um, yeah, also you have more of uh, energy, more energy there. Yes, can you 
just play that one time slower. Something like that. Yes, and if you carefully listen, your three sixteenths uh, that that are slurred. It's not exactly clear. The G. Can you just really listen to that? Yes. Yes. So you always release the bow once you play the E. But it should be. So don't lose the contact from your bow. Can you hear it? Yes? Kind of. Kind of. <laughs> very loud in here. <laughs> yes, very loud and vibrant. But um, so, just focus more on the G also. Mm -hmm. Yes, without accent. Uh, accent. I just one let's try it. So what what I think is that that you don't lose it here. So it should be still, still a bit. That's it, that's it, that's much better. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go on for now. Kind of empty tempo or? Uh, maybe now in tempo. Now comes the Yes, and what happens here? What's happening? What's happening here in the orchestra also? It's actually the first time that you are um, having the duet with the flute. Mm -hmm. So you are more or less accompanying the flute. And there should be more direction in the, you know, once the trills start. So then you are really focusing on the direction and uh, try to really have a very, very uh, tight uh, legato or bow change, at, especially at the tip, that it's a longer line to it. Now keep it, and go on, and more. Now crescendo, the D. Yes. And why are you stopping the the first note so much? Mm. Is there any reason for that, or maybe not a good one? You have no. Sorry. It's just it just happens. Yes. I guess I mean I was doing it on purpose. Yes. But. Just to have the control for the second note, or I guess just to yeah, like give a little clarity to the, okay. the next. Mm -hmm. Because I think here that's really, it's like a variation of the opening, right? 
So ba da da dum, yum, ba da 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 dum, ya da 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 dum. So here, I think, yeah, it should be, since it is going, I mean, uh, sequence uh, compared to the beginning, so it should go actually even more enthusiastic, or it should be more enthusiastic. So I think you're just um, helping if you, if you hold it a bit more and then connect, connect it to the second one. Yes, that's better. And I would suggest here that once the 16th start, just go down in the dynamic a bit and then you know you, you crescendo again to the next phrase. Crescendo, and again, less. And really sing here. And again. Yes, so here, I mean, it's very nice that you, that you really um, change between, you know, the um, rhythmical so it really opens up um, and then uh, once you go back to then you have to be in tempo again otherwise you're just not together with the orchestra so you're, um, yeah, just uh, once you reach the D, then you're a little bit late. So then you have the direction again. Okay. Crescendo. Yes. And most. and just try to um, bring more sound to the music. So, and then once you reach the G, the high G, I think, you know, the diminuendo that connects then with the second theme over a few bars um, should actually also be a long phrase. So you are starting, so the tension is still there. And because now you're relaxing, you play the G, and then somehow the the energy is a bit uh, less. So try to also here hold it and make a, a longer phrase with the diminuendo. Yes. That you keep the tension first, but then you have to fade. <laughs> yes. Or maybe just from the B by arm to the G. And also take your, sorry, one more remark. Take your time there. That's time. You know, like a singer who would um, reach his mm -hmm. note. Yeah, it's better. I mean, still, it's a bit, you know, beaty. Then it should be So that kind of, yeah, the longer, longer line. Can you try again? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I 
think it's easier if you take time on the D on the last one. What's the um, uh, what is the question? I mean, um, what are the possibilities to create or uh, yeah create a new atmosphere here? What what do you think? What can we do? We cellists. <laughs> very good thing to do here and uh, especially for the upbeat and so it's a it's a new um, it's just a new time frame here and that's what we want to feel that's so it's a sort of a moment of peacefulness and you know more um, relaxed than before but before it's very um, energetically strong. Here, um, yeah, Dvorak at his very, um, you know, intimate, personal, um, human side comes out, and that that's much easier, or it's just clearer if you take some time there, and and also from your left hand, try to you know have a more calmer quality. And that also um, concerns the vibrato should be a little um, calmer. Mm -hmm. And just take more time for the upbeat. Also, they, um, it's what I said before, the, the shorter notes, they, they can create energy, like bam, ba -da -da. or also here in the second theme, they can actually create calmness, and that's what you, what you want. Mm -hmm. So no, nothing is hectic here. second one, I mean, the, the first one is calm, and then it should go up a little, and then it comes down again. So those curves um, need to be audible somehow, <laughs> and they are not yet. They are still connected more. So just more concentration on this on the F sharp. Yes. What would happen 
I mean, that's just just uh, one idea. What would happen if you play everything softer? Just more piano, more inward. I like it. I think it's very good that you keep, you know, the quietness. <coughs> and then once you reach the, the sequence, the second one, I think, should be a little more. You know, it's like you're telling a story and then um, someone, you know, tells you something very intimate and then once you reach it's like securing oneself by repeating it one more time. And then it's opening up. So it's kind of a relief there. And I think also dynamically you can open up there a little more. And, and especially if you play uh, the beginning of the theme so quietly, then I think the effect will be even bigger. So, OK. Um, do you want to go on a bit more? Yes. Just from body, 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 body. Or there, just somewhere. <laughs> I think here also the quavers should be more equal. Especially the second one. You tend to be to play the first one long, then the second short, then the next one long, short, long, short. So it should be. So the second one also, I mean, always connects the next note. Mm -hmm. So just pay attention on that, that it doesn't get too short. Just, I mean, now the phrase should be still mm. there. Now it's a bit note by note. So. your bow here because it's more spiccato, right? Because he writes this slur and three dots. Um, so if you place your bow towards the bridge, I think that, that gives a much better sound. Okay. Yeah. Yes, even more, even more. It's almost, pont uh, if you think of Ponticello, and then you reach exactly that you know, border, then I think you're right there. Yes. It's just that point when, when the bow starts to bounce. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're right there. Also, technically, 
actually, this passage gets much easier if you focus more on the, on the melody, which is the A string. That's all. So B, A sharp, D, da, D, da, D, 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 together with the winds in the orchestra. And um, yeah, so, but it's sounding much better like that. Okay, let's go on. Yes, so this is another example of Dvorak having, you know, having been inspired by some folk tunes. So it should be, uh, again, it should sound complete, completely natural. Nothing too um, tense, or I don't know the word. But uh, try to really, also with the bow, have more, more freedom there. Maybe you don't need the slide there. Maybe you can stretch, stretch that. Yes, that's better. And I mean, rhythmically, it's So if you keep that pulse in mind, That always comes a bit too soon. So you play. Yeah, still, it's not. Um, still, it's not not quite clear. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's uncomfortable, I think, because of the many um, changes in the, in the left hand. Yeah. So I think it helps also if you play it, you know, with metronome, just at a, at a slow speed. So then, um, yeah, you will you will find it. Um, also, the second phrase could be actually less. Dynamic voice. So, like an almost an echo of what happened before. And even more is the contrast then when you get back to the rhythmical. Um, okay, one last time and then we go on. No, a little less. Also, I mean, immediate, yeah, right? The, the the difference and the the attack should be really there. Ram, can you just play the chord? Yeah. Yes, and more into the string. Ram. Yes, that's the the spirit, and don't lose it in, in the up bow. So just stay at one one place. <laughs> Better, yeah, okay. Yes. No, no, I'm, I'm listening. I'm
when it goes to the uh, harmonical change, that could be less, and then you can grow dynamically even more. So, but that was that was all very good. So the little phrase um, before the tutti, hop, 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 and just play that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I would go down. I mean, I would play the C still in forte, but then, and then yes, and then crescendo again. Yes. So that should be actually expanding more. So and and I would I would play the the upbeat, dum, bam with the with the orchestra together because you're um, just um, yeah playing that with the first violin or looking at the first violin there. So just play from the C sharp da 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 ya ba 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 ba. And yes, that should be more uh, broader. Yum, bum, beam. Yes, even broader, even broader. Yum, bum, beam. Yes. Um, yes, and not too soon. Dum, bum, bum. So it's everything. Is yeah, the upbeat could be even broader. Dum, bum, bum. So everything grandioso. Much better. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.